Okay, so first off, we're going to talk about When the Wave Strikes Ashore by Mary Murdoch. As you may guess from the references to the wave, because the army of the rising wave is the Dragon Clan army. Uh, this follows on from Agasha Simiko retiring to protest Baishi Shoju, and this is Miramoto Hitomi reacting to this. She's not happy. Let's just put it that way. She has decided that it is time to take justice into her own hands on the grounds that no one else can do it. There are pleas from people in her own clan and the Crane clan basically saying, peace, let's, let's try the peaceful route. And uh, she's very much not into that. So she brings her army into the Imperial Palace, sweeps the halls, and when she gets to Shoja's quarters, he happens to have his son there, Dairu. And because she remembers how she felt when her brother was killed in front of her when she was a child. She decides to not simply kill Shoju, but instead to arrest him. And that's pretty much it. But there are a lot of little fiddly details in there. It's clear, but I thought it might be useful to emphasize what Hitomi's actually doing here. Hitomi has formulated a plan by which she is going to use her army, the Army of the Rising Wave, to take the capital. She is fully expecting resistance. She expects that Shoju has suborned the Imperial Guard and at least has Scorpion troops there and probably allied clans. She certainly fully expects resistance throughout the city. Who would be stupid enough to kill the Emperor without having allies secured? Uh, so that's what she expects. So she has created a strategy by which she is going to do this. Her strategy is first to use her army to secure Otis on Uchi, claim the outer city, uh, claim the walls of the inner city, uh, and make sure that she is not struck from behind. After the very first scene, which is still in the morning when court opened, when she is being angry about Sumiko resigning and all of that, between then and the evening, she has basically conquered Oda Saruchi with her army. And so that's the first part. It's, she's securing the inner city. And then when we see her again, she is at that point going to secure the palace exterior. And then her plan is to enter the palace, secure the palace, and then kill Bayushi Shoju. So this is a, a very full combat plan, but we miss a whole day of fighting in the middle of this. A lot gets lost to work out. Yeah, this, this is the Dragon Clan coup. I made a joke yes. way back when FFG first started, and some, some of the fictions were coming out, and it began to realise we weren't going towards the traditional... Scorpion Clan coup, and then people were saying the lion are going to be doing this, and then and then the dragon put their army in. I started just joking. Every clan coup, and it's happening. I swear it is happening. Every clan is going to do a coup by the end of this. I'm sure of it now. So this is the Dragon Clan coup. This is a large actual day of, if not fighting, depending on how much resistance Satomi met in the city. And she's going in loaded for bear, that's for sure. Some people say whether uh, there's some argument whether it's a continuity error or, or what, but Hitomi comes into Shoju's room and she's all time to kill Shoju, but his son is there and she has this moment of, oh, he is the same age I was when my brother was killed in front of me, and, and, and thus she thinks maybe murdering the guy right now isn't the best plan. <laughs> but... She was eight, and Dairu is 13. And so some people are going, oh, is this a continuity error, or is Hitomi just really terrible at guessing kids' ages? I, I am sure that Shoji knew exactly who was going to come through that door and knew her past. We know that her past is actually very well known because it's been mentioned uh, in the invention with... Uh, where where uh, uh, the Asako jumps out of the window. <laughs> the librarian, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. So she mentions that she knows that there was a dragon Hatamoto whose brother was crushed by a Tetsubo wielded by Hida Yakumo. She knows that, and she's just nobody in the imperial capital. So Shoju knows about yeah. Itomi's brother. 
So that was staged. Anyway, I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about Hitomi's failure. Mm. Yes, because, because uh, yeah. <laughs> Hitomi's job as assigned by Tagashi was to go look after the prince. Mm. And uh, Mitsu and Hitomi argued a bit as to which prince they were supposed to look after, but one went to look after Daisetsu and one went to look after Sotori uh, in the city in the end, and now they have two princes. So Hitomi goes and follows the prince properly to go look after the prince, go look after Sotori. And she loses him in Kwanan's thing, and she's not out there looking for him. She came back to the capital. <laughs> We have no indication. Maybe she sent people to look for him, but we don't. We haven't heard anything about that. So if she had secured the prince, if, if somehow, either one, if the dragon had managed to actually secure either prince and have him available to plop on the throne as soon as Shoju's crimes are revealed, there would be no need for any civil war because... The regent would take over or Sotori. Sotori sucks, don't get me wrong. But everyone would definitely say, if a prince showed up and Sotori was gone, boom, here is, uh, here's the prince and life would proceed and there, there wouldn't be any need for a coup and there wouldn't be any war following this. But Hitomi did not secure the prince. She went back to the palace. Yeah, yeah. So now we've got the Dragon Clan coup. But a lot of people are saying this is actually the Crane Clan coup because now <laughs> Yoshi is going to end up being regent. Mm -hmm. There's no one else really at this point. So there you go. So this is really Yoshi's victory in a way. And Hitomi's really just played into pretty much everyone else's hands. The thing that could have happened is that you don't necessarily need an emperor there as long as nobody argues. <gasps> Blasphemy. That's how we got the Gozaku, right? <laughs> Shogunate time. If Hitomi hadn't done this and Shoju just hung around in his quarters, the machinery of the imperial capital would have just kept rolling until an emperor showed up. Just like nobody acknowledges the problem, then there's no problem is a very uh, imperial courty way to think about it <laughs> um, <laughs> as, as long as there's no decisions that need to be made it could have stalled for some length of time but Hitomi is the cat pushing the cup off the table it's it's done now it's on yeah yeah <laughs> she's not really this is basically one entire fic long unmasking honestly this is just a this is an outburst you, you clear all your strife from the one seat no i have too much strife my unmasking uh, well, is to the conquer Imperial the Palace. capital <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much well if you, you've conquered the outer city no too much strife okay yeah <laughs> but yeah that's a big that's an interesting one i'd, I'd love to see that this is going to have to percolate through all the other fictions <laughs> 